one. Welcome to our first session of CALS, Chico's Affordable Learning Solutions. Uh, we have four guest speakers this afternoon. Well, three, because I don't count myself as a guest speaker. I'm more like the moderator. Um, but we, 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 we welcome you here. What we're going to um, show you are options that are available to faculty at Chico for ordering textbooks for their students some of which may be not ordering textbooks, but looking at alternatives. So what we're going to do is guide you through some resources that are available on the website. And our speakers this morning will be in the order that they are presenting. Linda Riggins from Associated Students Bookstore. And then we'll have James Tyler, who's our online learning librarian. We will have Mark Langston, who's the electronic resources librarian. And myself is Laura Cedarberg, who manages our technology and learning program. So welcome to our session that's going to inform you about options in higher education about um, purchasing textbooks. The first page that we wanted to point you to is what the CSU puts out. And it is called the HEOA, or Higher Education Opportunities Act. There's information here, some of which you may be uh, familiar with and other things that may be new, but there's frequently asked questions that would be uh, good for you to take a peek at. And I'm not going to read through each of them, but as we go uh, down the page, you'll, you'll note that it isn't only issues raised about actually purchasing of textbooks, but maybe touching on academic freedom, um, some of the laws that are currently out there for higher education, compliance to those laws, and so on. The uh, handout that you folks have, I'd like to point you down to the bottom where you see a little red arrow. Um, there's a link that you can take with you. This handout has certain information that we will be speaking from, but the link at the bottom of the page has a, a list of all of the resources that we're pointing you to today. So if you just look at that one, it will be able to refresh yourself as to all the things that we're going to talk about. And I'm hoping that this handout might help you in terms of taking some notes. So we will be going through the um, matrix that you see there from columns one through, through nine. OK, so a couple more minutes here, and then I'm going to turn this over to Linda. But uh, <clears throat> We have a lot of uh, faculty on our own campus that are concerned about requirements interfering with academic freedom. And I'd like to point you to it, which says, a law contains a rule of construction. Nothing in this section shall be construed to supersede the institutional autonomy or academic freedom of the instructors involved in the selection of college textbooks, supplemental materials, and other classroom materials. So this is pretty important because Faculty don't want to be told what they should teach in their classes or what textbooks or resources they should use. And really, if you look at what HEOA is talking about, they're not asking for you to give anything, any rights up, but they're asking for you to consider options, and primarily it's for the purpose of saving students some money. So in terms of what uh, essential requirements campuses must satisfy, there are some laws here. And if we don't meet the federal laws, we could get some money taken away, which is why it's important that you all pay attention to this. <clears throat> uh, James is going to go over some of this. I don't want to repeat things. what prizes we post online, what things we post online for students. The, the primary objective here is for students to have an informed decision facing them about which classes they want to take based on knowing up front what the cost of textbooks are. And I think if we all were in the, the shoes of the students, we would agree that we would like to know before we sign up for that class what the expense might be for us and how many books we might need to buy. <clears throat> Now let Linda address some of this. Who is responsible for implementing the HEOA requirements on my campus? Anybody want to answer that? 
Anybody? Anybody? Okay, so Linda's saying that the bookstore the bookstore is uh, responsible for part of it. We have to comply with the everything that refers to us on what we have to supply to our students at the time of registration. Okay. Anybody else responsible? Mentions library, CIO, dean, department chairs, etc. It's a collaborative effort in terms of what we're providing, what we're telling students are um, their choices, and etc. So it really affects all of us. 